Hi booktube! I'm here just to do a very quick book review on this here, The World Before Us by Tom Hyam. Excuse the notes, I don't want to take them out yet because I do want to refer, refer back to some key concepts. However, as I say, this is just going to be a very quick book review. So this was released this year in March in the UK and it is by Viking, um, I think it's Viking, yeah, Viking, an imprint of random books. Um, and I'll just go through initial impressions of, you know, the physical aspects of the book itself first. I do like how sleek the yellow against the black background looks. What I don't like is that this black matte uh, background does tend to pick up fingerprints, if you can see, and I'm not really a fan of that. Um, the book itself is yellow, and I just wanted to share this with you. Um, I, I really enjoy that yellow cover. It reminds me of the first edition Dracula Constable um, book, that yellow. But anyways, um, that's that. And um, of course, we've got little footprints on the book as well, which belies the um, content within. This is a book about hominin dispersal, dispersals across the world. So I quite like the, uh, the little footprints the little footprints there. So anyways, about a bit about the author, Tom Hyam, um, is the director of the Radio Carbon Accelerator Unit in Oxford. So he is um, an expert on the topics within, and he's had direct involvement in the dating of some of the materials um, or spe um, specimens that he talks about in this book. So it's great to have the insider view. And in, indeed, some of it, some of this book is written like not necessarily a memoir, but there are um, snippets and anecdotes of the discoveries that they've made, um, which I personally really liked. I'm used to reading his scientific papers, so it's nice to hear um, or read what he has to say about how he felt when um, when some of these eureka movements that he's been a part of in, in the field of anthropology um, came to be. But anyways, um, so what... Uh, I'll give you a, a brief um, understanding of what this book is about. As I mentioned, um, a lot of it has to do with hominin dispersal across the world, but mainly um, it's about the uh, discoveries of um, the different hominin um, species that lived around 15, uh, sorry, 50,000 years ago. Um, so as recently as 20. 20 years ago, um, we had thought that perhaps the only other hominins that um, we came into contact with, we as in um, Homo sapiens, uh, was Neanderthals in Europe. Um, those are the most famous ones, but um, what we've come to discover in the past 20 years is there's so many different hominin um, species out there. So we've got Homo lusinensis and Homo floresiensis in, in Southeast Asia. We've discovered the Denisovans in 2010, that fe um, all of these species fe uh, feature heavily in this book. So it's a great um, synthesis and it is the most up-to-date synthesis of the current body of knowledge for um, hominin dispersal and the hominin family tree um, 50,000 years ago and what the implications are for um, current interpretations and, and conclusions about um, our species and the way we interacted with the other species. So that's a bit about the book. Um, what I liked about this book, um, I, do, I do rate this highly. I, I probably would give it between five and a half to five stars. Um, it is a, it's a balance between, I think he finds the right balance between explaining technical concepts and making this readable for a general audience. This, um, as I say, this isn't necessarily meant to be, um, you know, a rigorous, uh, a rigorous read. It's, it's meant to be enjoyed and um, by, by the general reader. So he does, he, he explains briefly, but very well, key concepts that allows the reader to understand the conclusions that are made about certain discoveries. So for instance, when he talks about um, the Denisovans, the, the hominin which was discovered from very small bone fragments in, in the Altai Mountains. He discusses 
um, how we uh, how genetic sequencing is possible, what proteomics are, what zoo, zoo MS is, zoo archaeology by mass spectrometry, and how these techniques have been crucial for um, making the conclusions uh, uh, that that are made about you know their age, what species they are, how they differ from um, other hominins, um, what they mean for um, hominin dispersals throughout uh, dispersal throughout the world. So he does a great job of explaining these key concepts, and of course he also explains um, the what the different um, dating methods are. So radiocarbon dating, of course, that's that's his uh, that's his thing. Thermal th thermoluminescence dating, which is uh, dating sediments, and um, uranium series dating. So um, he's he does very well, I think, in this this book, just explaining those com um, concepts. He also explains in the beginning um, the out of Africa model, which I think is a very good place to start since we are discussing um, hominin dispersal. So the out of Africa model is um, the, it explains, or it is the hypothesis that um, humans evolved in Africa and then spread out of the world. And that's currently supported by the genetic evidence that we have for humans and also fossil evidence. Um, so that's a good place to start. And then, of course, he goes on to discuss the discovery of um, the Denisovans and how um, how um, heavily involved he's been in that process, not only for dating it, but the relationships that he's had with um, the Max Planck Institute and Svante Pabo um, for uh, identifying um, that this is, you know, a different species. Um, and he also talks about Homo luzinensis and um, Homo floresiensis. Um, it's important uh, to understand these, uh, where these two are situated in the hominin family tree, but also um, where they are geographically. So they, li they lived um, in Southeast Asia, um, in the Philippines, and uh, the tiny island of um, Flores in Indonesia. And the reason why it's important in understanding where they lived is because um, these tiny islands, even back then when um, sea levels were lower than they are now, they still couldn't be reached without the use of watercraft. And that's important for um, our understanding of hominin evolution and cognitive abilities because we used to think that um, watercraft was something that only humans could produce. Um, you know, we, it, it, it sort of breaks the under breaks the mold of this commonly held understanding um, that hominin uh, humans were far superior cognitively than um, other hominin species, and um, that's what gave us the edge over over them, and that's why we've survived and they they've gone extinct. Um, and it's also uh, likewise it's also important for understanding that as well um, in terms of the Denisovans because. We do have evidence for Denisovans in Papua New Guinea um, and in um, Australia, and that comes from um, genetic evidence, um, not fossil evidence. And the reason why this is important for understanding, um, so again, it could only be uh, Suhul, the, the giant landmass that was Australia that was connected to um, Papua New Guinea, um, could only be reached by watercraft. Um, and therefore, that's important for our understanding because we do have evidence which infers that um, other species, rather than just our own, were reaching these um, land masses and crossing vast um, uh, waterscapes uh, to get there. And of course, it's also important because we do have this genetic evidence for Denisovans being in um, in Sahel at that time and. If the only evidence that we have is genetic, then therefore we do have um, evidence for interbreeding between our species and theirs. Um, this probably wouldn't come as a surprise to some of you if you are familiar with these topics. We do have evidence for interbreeding between um, humans and Neanderthals in, in Eurasia, and also um, other instances of um, uh, Hominin, hominin um, interbreeding between Denisovans and Neanderthals. Denny, um, the, the fragment of bone that was identified using ZooMS, 
that was identified as a as having Neanderthal-like uh, mitochondrial DNA. Um, but at the same time, it, uh, it looks like it's a hybrid species, meaning that it had um, within the past generation, um, or yeah, so sorry, uh, it, it would have had um, either um, one Neanderthal parent or, and, and one Denisovan parent. But anyway, sorry, I'm sort of rambling on. So th that's what I've liked about the book. Um, I don't think there's anything that I didn't like about this book. The only thing that I would caution you on is if if you are picking this up for um, your uh, kids, just be mindful that there are a couple of um, F-bombs in here when he talks about the discoveries that he's made. It's not crude or anything, um, or um, and it doesn't happen often. Uh, it was just one of those eureka moments that they've had, um, which are so rare. Um, and of course he was, you know, how else are you going <laughs> to express yourself? But yeah, that's the only thing that I would caution you on if you, uh, if you do have any kids that you're picking this up for, um, and you don't want them reading that. So yes, I think, um, I'm going to stop rambling on about this book. Um, except, sorry, I take that back. I did want to just mention that if you are interested in doing further research, the references and notes are amazing. Um, there's um, there's some scientific papers in here. Um, he explains some concepts in further detail. Um, I can't actually wait to go through this just so I can um, read a bit more about um, genetics and proteomics and um, radiocarbon dating, just so I can understand this a bit better. But anyways, I hope you found this useful and I hope you do pick this book up. Um, and uh, let me know your thoughts are, uh, what your thoughts are if you do. So um, have a good day, booktube. Bye.